Poker Factor's high on this one. Okay. Uh, I would imagine mild steel, three quarters by one quarter inch thick. Hey, welcome back to the shop. Uh, this is episode three. Uh, last time you saw uh, me routing this out on the Max NC with the idea that um, I would do that. But in the meantime, I have gotten a 3D printer, uh, Prusa i3 Mark III, and so I decided let's give that a shot. So we did that. Problem was, uh, we ran into issues. What are those issues? One, warpage on the bed. Uh, there's too much material here. We printed it like this on the way up. And uh, I think there's too much material here. And as this cooled, it pulled this edge away from being flat and level. Uh, the idea was to join these with screws, uh, like before. But uh, there would be too much of a gap there at the top. So, that got put into the waste bin. Uh, so we thought, let's print it like that, du -du 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 -du, straight up. Uh, so we, we did this one, uh, ran into some issues, uh, and it's just a basic model for fitment. Then we got a little closer on the fitment, and we started experimenting with a cartridge system. Uh, but it could be put in either way, and you would, uh, you'd put all your terminals in here, and slide it in and have your terminals everywhere you need. Good idea, but not quite right. Uh, so we refined the model a little more, a little more, until we got to this. Introducing the adapter. <laughs> I call it the DW20. Uh, no reason. <laughs> any rate, as you can see, it, has, it is the cartridge, but we have chamfers in these corners. See if you can get that. So as you can see, we chamfered uh, that corner and left that corner straight. That way, you can only put it in one way. Uh, not that it matters, because the prongs are such on this that not much you can do really to mess it up. So what is this? Well, we have positive and negative uh, are reversed. So the positive on one side. So we have to swap them. Uh, so what we did was we have this one going through to the back and then coming out this side. Uh, and this one stays on the front. And there is a hundred thou of material dividing those two. And to place them in, we placed slots here and here that will take these like so. Push it all the way up to the front. go super glued in good and tight then you take your battery fully charged of course and slide it on home like so so we're fully charged there then you go ahead and get yourself one of I got this for 25 bucks off of uh, Facebook marketplace had a bad Came with a bad battery. There we go. And then you go ahead and you just slide your new one on home. Like a so. And then uh, give her a little test. Oh yeah. Oh, this is going to be good. I think we need to find something to cut. Okay, so we have some 2x4s, uh, we have a 2x4, uh, this is about one and a quarter inch thick by two-ish inches wide, two and a half, uh, this one's a little over about an inch and a quarter as well, uh, three quarter inch plywood, we'll rip cut it, uh, but yeah, we'll just uh, chop these all up into small little pieces, this is maple, I uh, don't know what this is, but it's really hard. Uh, it's a, an old piece of, well, what do you call those things? Uh, pallet wood, that's it. So yeah, any anyway, rate, there you go. Get an idea there.
right, so click on the face. It's not warm to the touch. Still have two bars left, but it does seem to be chugging a little bit. All right, let's take a look. Still have two ba two bars left on it. Uh, I think we are reaching the limit of usability, though, because uh, this does appear to be yeah, blades a little warm. Engine's not warm at all. The hand, <laughs> the handle, the handle's warmer uh, than the motor. <laughs> Just death gripping that thing. Ah! But anyway, uh, yeah, totally viable. Uh, it does only use probably half the capacity of the battery. Uh, so a larger battery would be better, would give you more runtime. Uh, let me quick add up how much we cut of each one. Okay, so that is the damage that was done. <laughs> it, uh, it certainly rivals a wood chipper in turning perfectly good wood into scrap wood. So the plywood is actually one inch thick plywood. Since a brush DC motor's RPM is proportional to the voltage applied to it, uh, we can probably assume that this is going to be uh, spinning le uh, less quickly uh, than at 24 volts. Uh, so our output is supposed to be 24 volts, 4000 RPM. We have a photo tachometer, a little piece of reflective tape there, so we'll see what we get. It looks to be about uh, 3,300 to 3,500, so we're probably only going to cut about a quarter, three quarters as fast as we would normally see at 4,000 RPM. Uh, so you have to go a little bit slower if you're going to apply an 18 volt battery to a 24 volt motor. 3 eighths by 1 inch aluminum. certainly goes straight through 3 8 aluminum like it's nothing. Pucker factor's high on this one. Okay. Uh, I would imagine mild steel, 3 quarters by 1 quarter inch thick. Oh, it's so close! It's so close to coming through! <laughs> oh, come on! It's so close! Oh. <laughs> oh, I don't know if that's the correct RPM for cutting steel or not, but uh, it's strangely satisfying. Uh, that I do not do at home, obviously. Um, 
Those poor teeth. Oh, yep, we broke one off here. Focus. You frigger. Focus. Focus. Come on. Yeah, so we broke to one tooth, two teeth, three, four, five, six, six teeth. Maybe seven or eight. I don't know. Quite a few. All right, so note to yourself, do not cut. Um, well, now I got to go purchase a new blade. But, uh, yeah, might be able to cut steel if I get an appropriate metal cutting blade. Uh, this obviously has a very thin kerf, uh, which probably helps this. Um, but I'm thinking we stalled out because we didn't have any teeth on a couple of them. And she, uh, she banged into it. Small price to pay for YouTube stardom, am I right? Hey, thanks for watching. I will stick all of this up on Thingiverse. Uh, it's the first time I've actually put anything on Thingiverse, so <laughs> I, if I miss out on something or don't do something correctly uh, and you go there, please feel free to correct me. Uh, I'm new to this whole 3D printing scene. So, anyway, do my best to make this as user friendly for you to put together. Um, I've certainly gone through enough iterations uh, as far as feature improvements. I did have to do uh, some finagling uh, with sandpaper in here uh, on these edges, so I'll thin that down in the profile um, as well as probably here, thin that down a bit more. Uh, I use CA glue uh, to hold these all together, uh, hold those uh, aluminum strips in there. We got a new tool. This has been a year in the, well, maybe six months in the making, but uh, yeah. I hope you all uh, enjoyed what you saw. Success. Thanks for watching.